we've reached one of the most important concepts in computer science, the order of growth of a computational process. So the order of growth is a method for bounding the resources used by a function by the size of a problem. What does it mean to bound the resources of something? Well, the idea is that we don't always need to know exactly how long something is going to take or exactly how much memory it's going to use. What we do need to know is whether it's going to use too much or too little. And so bounds are ways of expressing the range in which uh, resources used might fall. So we want upper bounds and lower bounds that tell us how much is going to be used even if we don't know exactly the number of seconds or the number of times that something is going to get called or exactly how much memory is going to get used. The bounds let us quantify how large or how small in general some quantity is without necessarily being able to compute its exact value. Okay, so let's say that n is the size of a problem and every problem can be quantified in terms of its size somehow so in our count factors problem, n was the size of the number we were computing the factors of for Fibonacci, is which Fibonacci number we're computing, etc. And we know that we need to be able to measure the resources used, such as time or space. So let's say that Rn is a function which is the resources used by having an input or a problem size of n, and then using some solution we write the following. The resources used for a problem of size n is big theta of some function of n. And what that means is that there are positive constants k1 and k2 such that the actual resources used for a problem of size n is larger than k1 times f of n and smaller than k2 times f of n for some sufficiently large value of n. So why on earth would we do something like this? Well, here's the whole idea. The actual resources used might be something complicated and hard to measure. What we'd like to have is a very simple function f that just, for instance, squares it or square roots it, something very simple. And the idea is if we have the same simple function that can serve as the lower bound and an upper bound, differing only by two different constants, then we can say that the actual value r of n grows as this simpler function f of n. So that's this big theta means is that they grow in the same order of growth. So they might differ by some constants here and there, but they're both lower bounded and upper bounded by some simple function. Let's look at some examples. So we looked at memoization, which is a way of making recursive functions faster. And we also looked at iteration. So here's two different ways to compute Fibonacci numbers. An iterative implementation just starts with previous and current. And then for n minus one times, we replace previous and current with the current and the sum of the previous and the current as they were before. And then we return the current value. So this is a way to compute Fibonacci numbers. And then memoized tree recursion says compute Fib as you would expect with these two base cases, but memoize the result meaning once we've computed Fib4, we don't need to make recursive calls again. We already know what Fib4 is. And we can use it multiple times. Okay, so what is the time and the space of these functions? Well, the time it takes to go through a for loop for range n minus one times is big theta n, or sometimes we abbreviate that by saying it's order n, meaning there's n passes through this loop. Now, actually, there are n minus 1 passes through the loop. But that difference in a constant 
just doesn't matter. And that's what's nice about big theta notation, is that you can ignore small constants like that. And the space, we say, is theta of 1. Why 1? Well, theta of 1 is used whenever there's a constant amount of something. So the constant amount of space used is because we're not creating any new frames here. And there's only a fixed number of names, prev, curve, fibiter, and that's it. And so we have a constant amount, so we say space is theta of 1. What about memoized tree recursion? Well, this is also theta n. How do we know that? Because we're actually just going to call fib n times. And the space that gets used up is theta n. How do we know that? Well, we have to memorize fib n for every n up until the n that we want. So for computing fib 30, we have to memorize what fib 29 and fib 28 and fib 27 are in the cache or the memoized version of the function, which means that we have n different entries in that cache. How about another example? Counting factors. The order of growth idea can still be used even if we could exactly quantify the amount of time and space that this is going to use up, which we did before. So the slow version we'll say is theta n with space of theta 1 because all we do is we remember how many factors there are as we go along. And what about the version where we test each k from 1 to the square root of n? Well, that's theta square root of n. We don't need to figure out whether it's the floor or worry about any constants anymore. The only thing we need to worry about is that the time it takes grows on the order of square root of n with constant space. 